1972, a day that changed the face and gender of college sports, the government's passing of Title IX. I wouldn't be here without Title IX. The Education Amendment states, in part, no person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under, under any education program or activity. The watershed moment in collegiate sports history would not have happened without the hard work of many who conceived the idea, wrote the law, and worked to pass it. And though she was not a beneficiary of Title IX, Billie Jean King is perhaps the face of the gender equality in sports movement. Billie Jean at last has broken the record of 19 victories. I was upset with my sport. It didn't, I noticed you know, everybody wore white shoes, white socks, white clothes, white ball. I had, you know, played with white balls, and all the people were white. And I asked the question, where's everybody else? So that started to make me think about what I wanted to do with my life, truly with my life. And I thought, if I could ever become number one, I would have a platform to help change things, not only my sport, but the world. King's battle of the sexes match with Bobby Riggs took place the year after the Title IX amendment passed and she knew the importance of the match, not only for women athletes, but for the preservation and respect of Title IX. Men uh, who were, like say, watch the King Riggs match, for instance, they'll come up to me with tears in their eyes. Men will come up and they'll go, I saw that match when I was 10 years old. I saw that match when I was 12 years old. And you changed my whole life in that I now have a daughter and I want my sons and my daughters, or my son and my daughter, or my daughter to have equal opportunity. One of the first recipients of the Gender Equality Amendment was Deirdre Kane, a captain of Haddonfield, New Jersey's Paul VI state championship team in 1972. Kane seemed guaranteed a college scholarship, but Title IX did not pass until two weeks after she graduated. I chose the University of Dayton. A lot of folks from my high school went there. It was a very popular Midwest Catholic school, and I went to a Catholic school in New Jersey. So Title IX being passed definitely influenced the rest of my life, even though right at that time I didn't realize it would. After enrolling at the University of Dayton, the school awarded its first ever athletic scholarship to a woman, and Kane was the recipient, but that wasn't until 1975. At the University of Dayton, it was more of a ceremonial thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I played three sports and was a decent student, and they were kind of looking for a pioneer type person. Uh, really did not receive the scholarship to my senior year, so financially, uh, it wasn't a great thing, but boy, did it open doors for me for the rest of my career. And that's a sentiment many other female athletes echo. For so many female athletes out there to play a sport that they love was, was given to them due to Title IX. So I'm just very thankful for it and um, pleased that it, it occurred and, you know, uh, I'm very thankful. However, Title IX isn't only about women's athletics. At the heart of it, it's about equality, ensuring no one is discriminated against because of gender. And that's exactly what former University of Delaware men's track captain Corey Wall is arguing. UD cut the men's track team last year in its 100th season, saying it was in order to remain compliant with Title IX. Delaware men's track is now a club sport and therefore no longer providing scholarships. It didn't seem fair. Um, if I was on a men's team and a women's team got cut, I would be upset about it too. It's not that my team was cut, I'm mad, let's, let's start an argument about it. It just doesn't seem fair that just because the school wanted to cut our team, they were able to use Title IX as an excuse for doing so. Our feeling was our team was cut because we were men and that shouldn't be something um, that happens. Uh, that, that is not in line with the intent of Title IX. And even the pioneers of the sports equality movement agree, there are still strides to be made. I think we need to be very good to both genders and always think of both genders on every single issue, always. And I don't think sometimes we do that. We need to, to get out of our own shoes you know, and talk to other people, you know, like let's hear from both sides. So on this, the 40th anniversary of the historic amendment, there are a record number of women competing in intercollegiate athletics, nearly 200,000 across the country. That's a five-fold increase since 1972. The positive effects of Title IX are evident, even with more work to be done. Amy Fadul, Comcast Sportsnet.